Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Quran Weekly, this is your brother Umar Sulaiman Welcome back to the Superstar Series So today the person that we're going to be talking about What makes him so interesting Is that he actually is not a Sahabi He's not a companion of the Prophet Sallallahu He's from the Tabi'een He's from the generation after the companions But at the same time The Prophet Sallallahu praised him And the Prophet Sallallahu spoke highly of him Before I introduce him Let me say, you know, let me share with you a hadith From the Prophet Sallallahu Where Rasulullah Sallallahu said uh, that there are some people, Rubba Ash'ath, a person who might be d- disheveled, matfu' bil abwab, and he's you know turned away from people's doors. So it's a person who's low in society. If he proposes to someone, then no one's going to accept his proposal. If he tries to intercede, no one's going to accept his intercession. He doesn't have much money, he doesn't have much social status. But the Prophet ﷺ said, Law aqsama ala Allah la abarra. But that person, if he takes an oath upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will surely honor that oath. And this shows us something that's very significant, that when we're talking about the superstars, the Sahaba, we want to be like them. And the story that I'm going to share with you today shows that a person who is not actually from the companions can achieve a status that is like that of the companions and can, uh, you know, can, can earn the praise of the Prophet ﷺ and more importantly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This young man is named Uwais al-Qarani, Uwais ibn Amr, may Allah be pleased with him. So he's from the tribe of Qaran, Uwais ibn Amr, so he's Uwais al-Qarani. And there are a lot of fables and a lot of stories that are told about him, but there, are some, there is some authentic material about him. This young man was someone who grew up in Yemen uh, who had leprosy. Okay, and at the same time, his father died at a very young age. So he had leprosy, his father died at a very young age. So he had to take care of his mother all by himself. And at the same time, he had this leprosy. So he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure him from this leprosy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cured every part of it except for a dirham. And he asked for you know, the size of a dirham, the size of a coin, so that whenever he looks at that part on his shoulder, at that, at that dirham of leprosy, bad skin on his shoulder, he would remember the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon him. So he was cured from his leprosy, and he had just this coin size of bad skin on, si- on him, so that he looks at it every time and remembers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was the one that cured me. At the same time, he would stay in the service of his mother, and his mother actually went blind. And subhanAllah, when the Muslims came to Yemen, he saw the ambassador of the Muslims, and it was after something very interesting had happened. One night, his mother was blind, and they didn't have any lights in the house, and so he couldn't get around, but his mother could get around. So he followed his mother around, because she'd become used to being blind and getting around without lights. And subhanAllah, this, this really touched him. Because the next day when he went to see what the Muslims were saying when the ambassadors were sent by the Prophet wasallam, the ayah that was being recited was an ayah from Surah Nur. And the ayah was, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَجْعَلِ اللَّهُ لَهُ نُورًا فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ نُورٍ Whoever Allah does not give nur to, Allah does not give light to, has no light. So he, he heard that ayah and he was very touched. And he became Muslim. He accepted Islam at the hands of the ambassadors of the Prophet wasallam. But at the same time, he never went to see the Prophet ﷺ because he was taking care of his mother and he was being dutiful to his mother. Now, the Prophet ﷺ never met him. But one day, the Prophet ﷺ is sitting with the companions, and this is in Sahih Muslim. And he says to the companions that there is a man, Khayru Tabi'in, the best of those that come after you, the next generation. There is a man by the name of Uwais ibn Amr, Uwais al Qarani. Okay, Uwais ibn Amr. And the Prophet ﷺ said, that he was, uh, he's from Yemen, he will come to you from Yemen, from Murad, from the tribe of Quran. And the Prophet ﷺ said that he had leprosy and he was cured from his leprosy. He asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure his leprosy except for the size of a dirham on his shoulder. And the Prophet ﷺ said, and he has a mother, he has a mother, and he treats his mother with excellence. Okay, he is obedient to his mother. And he said, لَوْ أَقْسَمَ عَلَى اللَّهِ لَأَبَرَّ And that young man, if he took an oath upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will surely honor his oath. So if you meet him, then ask him to seek forgiveness for you. Can you imagine the Prophet is telling the Sahaba, if you meet this man who's never even met me, who's not even from the Sahaba, then ask him to seek forgiveness for you because of his status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he became Khalifa, and he saw the different people coming from Yemen, the different tribes coming from Yemen. Umar radiallahu anhu would every single year go out and ask, Afikum Uwais al-Qarani, is Uwais al-Qarani amongst you? Is Uwais al-Qarani amongst you? 
And so finally, after 10 years, Umar ibn Khattab anhu goes and he starts to inquire amongst the people of Yemen that are coming for Hajj, Afikum Awais al Qarani, and they said, Yes, there he is. And they pointed him out. And Umar anhu went to him and he said, Are you Awais ibn Amr? And he said, Yes. He said, From Murad? He said, Yes. From Qaran? He said, Yes. And Umar anhu said, Did you have leprosy? And you were cured from your leprosy except for, this, for, for a dirham on your shoulder? And he said, Yes. And Umar asked to see it. And he saw it. And then he said, and do you have a mother that you, that you are obedient to? And he said, yes. He said, then you are the one that the Prophet ﷺ spoke about. So he said, seek forgiveness for me. So Awais al-Qarani said, you're a Sahabi. You're Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. لو كان نبيا من بعد لكان عمر. If there was to be a Prophet after me, it would have been Umar. You make istighfar for me, you should seek forgiveness for me. And Umar radiallahu anhu said, no, the Prophet ﷺ said, if I, meet, if, if I meet this person, then I should ask him to seek forgiveness. So he did so. Then Umar radiallahu anhu, he, he said to him, are there any favors I can do for you? He said, where are you headed to next? He said, I'm going to Kufa in Iraq. He said, let me write a letter to the governor of Kufa so he can honor you, so that you can be taken care of. Oh, he said, I don't have any need for that. I like to live amongst the poor and the simple. He said, the only favor I ask you is that you don't tell anybody. Right? You don't, you don't spread this news about me and things of that sort because obviously it would spoil his hajj. And, and, and subhanAllah, it shows you his humility because imagine if you were in that place. Like everybody, come on. I'm the one that the Prophet ﷺ was talking about. Come seek your forgiveness from me. But that's not who he was. So Uwais said, keep it down. But people noticed Umar anhu going to him and that Umar was asking always about Uwais and so they already knew who he was. And so another man came to Uwais and said, uh, seek forgiveness for me. He said, you just performed hajj, you should seek forgiveness for me. Then he said to the man, he said, did Umar anhu tell you about me? So the man said yes. So Uwais, whenever he recognized that the people were recognizing, were recognizing who he was, he finished his hajj and he immediately left. And the end of the narration was that he had a mantle, he had a burda that if anyone saw it, they would say, where did he get that from? He had a very unique dress, a very unique uh, appearance. And obviously he's someone who's very special that the Prophet ﷺ even recognized him without ever having seen him والسلام, And so this teaches us a very, very important lesson. How did Owais attain the status that he attained that even the Sahaba were told, go seek forgiveness from him? Owais radiallahu anhu was dutiful to his mother, he was obedient to his mother. And so when you excel in your treatment of your parents and when you are dutiful to your parents, then you could reach that same reward. And of course the second thing was that he suffered from a disease and he was patient with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him a cure. But we should all strive to treat, to, to treat our parents with excellence and to have excellent character because the Prophet wasallam said, the closest to me on the day of judgment and the most beloved to me are those who have the best character. And if we have good character, then we too can be superstars and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to join us with the companions and the siddiqun, the, 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 the truthful ones and the shuhada and the martyrs. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Jannat al-Firdaus. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullahu khayran. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullahi wa barakatuh.